Hi, Verbling. This is my last class of the day, and we're talking about recipes. We're going to share some of our favorite recipes and maybe talk a little bit about our food preferences. And we're going to learn a lot of interesting vocabulary. Hi, Rafael. How are you? Hi, Michael. I'm OK. And you? Oh. Oops. Thank you. Oops. Sorry. Sorry, Rafael. That was my fault. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm doing very well. And um, today we're talking about recipes. Do you have any favorite foods, Rafael? Mm, only the simple. Mm, pasta or something something quick to... Quick, some quick and clean to do, you know? Mm-hmm. Okay, what kind of sauce do you like to eat with pasta? Mm. Sauce, when you force the sauce, is a temper. You use to temper the food, yes? Yeah, like um, usually pasta comes with tomato sauce or maybe a garlic sauce, some kind of liquidy substance that comes on top of it. Uh, I, I mostly, mostly all the times I use sauce, uh, I use tomato sauce or garlic maybe. Okay, that sounds delicious. And do you know how to make these foods by yourself, or do you usually have someone else cook for you? Uh, most, most, almost all the times I buy, I buy. It's, it's easy to do. I put in the microwave, so. Ah, okay. Because, <laughs> I, because I, yeah, because I don't have time to cook. You know, I, I came home, late. So I don't have time to to cook and do so many difficult foods, you know. I understand. I often find myself in the same situation. All right. Well, I'm going to put the notes in the chat box for us and we'll get started on our class today. So, question number 1. These are some warm-up questions that we'll be doing to get into the topic. What are life's simple pleasures? So what's something in your life that's simple but makes you very happy? Can you think of anything like that, Rafael? Well, maybe see the nature, spend time with your family and friends, you know, just mm -hmm. talking or... Yeah. Maybe hang out um, on Fridays or Saturdays. Mm-hmm. That's Simple nice. Simple things. Janini, welcome to class. Uh, Janini Lopez Lima, are you there? You might have to unmute yourself, Janini. I'm going to screen share with you to show you. Okay, so if you click this button here, you should be able to unmute yourself. And if you're having other kinds of audio trouble, come to this button over here where it says settings. And it should help you change your settings. You can change from the default device or to something else. Ooh, look at that. I'm going to change mine too. All right. And if you have any other trouble that I can help you with, let me know in the chat box. All right. Well, until then, I guess we'll just move on. So question number two, how do you feel about cooking? Rafael, how do you feel about cooking? I'm not, I'm not a good cooker. Uh, I'm not exactly a good cooker. I, I just cook when, well, what is easy to cook and uh, it's not, it's, I don't think it's a kind of, 
activity I would like do to do so much. I don't know. I like to eat, but I don't like to cook, you know. <laughs> okay, so you do it because you have to, but not because you like to. Yes. All it's right. Not. Fair enough. And question number three, what is your favorite kind of food? So you said pasta is your favorite food, right? Yes. That's a good choice. Do you like it because it's easy to make or because it just tastes the best? Yeah, the taste is good and... Mm -hmm. And uh, as I said, we can we can choose our temper. We can we can choose it. We can. It's a good, you know. Maybe mm -hmm. with some maybe with some wine or. It's yeah. Good too. It's good for casual occasions and also for fancy occasions, right? Yes. All right. And what's your recipe for pasta? When you have to make pasta, if you're going to make dinner for yourself and a friend, tell me how you do it. How do you make pasta? Mm, well, I put them. I put them in the pan. I I boil some water at first and put the and put salt and. And something and other, and other things I find in the refrigerator, I put <laughs> them and and start to bo and wait for the water boils and then I put the the pasta there in and and after I put the and I put more more salt or more tempered you know it's mm -hmm. a it's not a it's not difficult to do. All right, and then what happens after you take the pasta out of the water? You just add the things from the fridge and the um, the salt, the seasoning, like salt and stuff. Yes, I I wait, I wait the I wait the pasta becomes I wait the heat goes on uh, the temperature uh, during the during the, I wait to decrease the temperature. I know exactly the words. Mm -hmm. I wait the temperature decrease, and after I put, I mix with some other things, and and I eat. You know, it's not as I said. I'm not good at the kitchen, so it's a. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for describing your process. I think I don't think it's a good. It's a be, It's one of the best process of cooking, but. It's, it's enough for me. <laughs> Giannini, are you there? Yeah, I'm there. I'm awesome. here. Awesome. Good to hear from you. How are you, Giannini? I'm fine. And you? I'm doing very well. Where are you from? I'm from Brazil. What part of Brazil? Rio de Janeiro. Excellent. We have a very Brazilian class today. Thanks. Thanks. All right. Um, do you have the notes open, Giannini? Not open. Yes, yeah, so I opened this. Okay, so the Cooking next thing... Recipe. Yeah, exactly. Would you like to tell us what your favorite recipe is before we start in on the recipes? Uh, my favorite. <laughs> um, a lot of favorite recipients, but my favorite is lasagna. Ooh, and how do you make lasagna? Um, is 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 do with uh, pasta too, but you put the cheese, many cheese, and I don't know what I talk in in English, but it's very tasty for to eat. For and eat. Do you put meat in the lasagna or just cheese and sauce? You put what? Cheese is only. Do you put meat in the lasagna? Yes, yes. Meat, yeah. Sorry. Meat, yeah. What kind of meat? What kind of meat? Uh -huh. I forget the name, but... Um, Chicken? Chicken, yes. Or beef? Muida, sorry. Um, um, like ground beef? Yes. There, I put that in the chat box. It's like ground beef. Sounds pretty good. Yeah, it's good. Ahmad, welcome to class. Hello, how are you? I'm doing very well. How are you? Um, 
Giannini, it's a little, there's a little bit of background noise coming from your audio. Do you mind if I mute you while you're not speaking? What? Do you mind if I mute your audio while you're not speaking? Because we're getting a little bit of feedback from your audio. Kind of some strange sounds. Sound? This is my wife's sounds? There's something in the background that's coming from your audio, so it's a little bit noisy in class. Okay, let me see. Sorry. That's okay. So um, right now it seems like it. we don't hear too much of it. But if if it gets loud, we might have to mute you, and that would mean that you have to unmute yourself later, just so you know. But I'll, I'll let you know if we have to mute you, because right now it sounds good. All right, Ahmad, would you like to share a recipe with us that you really enjoy? Uh, okay. Um, I like pasta. Uh, I like uh, sandwiches, of course. Uh, and What's your favorite kind of sandwich? Tuna. Oh, yum. How do you make a tuna sandwich? Uh, easy recipe. Uh, I just mix it with uh, uh, some mayonnaise. Uh, I season uh, with some pepper and salt. Mm -hmm. uh, I might uh, put some uh, slices of uh, cucumber as well. Yeah, that's it. Excellent. Thank you. Welcome to class, Samuel. Thank you. How are you today? I'm fine, thank you. All right, would you like to share a recipe you like with us? Well, I like to eat, but I can't cook anything. <laughs> I don't even know how it gets in my plate or how it gets in my mouth, but I can't <laughs> cook anything. I just so then know who, how to eat. Who cooks for you? My mom. <laughs> I see. Or, is, she, is she a good cook? Yes, yeah, she's an amazing cooker. What do you like that she makes? Mm, pasta. I love it. And uh, everything that she does, like meat and uh, everything. <laughs> it sounds pretty good. What's your favorite kind of pasta? Pasta with what? Mm, with meat <laughs> and uh, tomato sauce. Mm -hmm. Tomato sauce. That's good yeah. stuff. I love it. <laughs> Very cool. Thank you. Now, Burr, welcome back. How are you? Hi, a little tired, but everything all right. <laughs> yeah, it's nine o'clock for you, right? Or no, um, seven yes. o'clock? No, seven o'clock. Okay. Yeah, I'm having difficulty doing the time calculations because I just changed time zones. <laughs> yeah, yes, it's something difficult to do. Mhm. Mm and what's your favorite recipe, Nauber? Uh, I don't cook very much, but I love uh, Japanese food. Uh, I love some Brazilian food, well, typical foods like tapioca. I don't know if you, we know what is this, is that, but uh, it's uh, some kind of sandwich with uh, cheese and eggs. But you, you you don't use the bread. Oh, interesting. It sounds delicious. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> All right. Well, I already put the notes in the chat box, so hopefully everyone has them open. I'm going to put them in the Google chat again, just in case. And today we're looking at some recipes. So we're going to read through a couple recipes and talk a little bit about the vocabulary used in them and how they're written. Also conversions of empirical measurements and metric measurements. So our first recipe is for chicken tikka masala. Has anyone ever heard of this dish before? No. Indian food, or yeah. it's definitely Asian anyways. I think it's yeah. Indian, though. It is Indian, yes. Oh, excellent. Do you know? You're an expert? Yeah, no, I'm not, but uh, I love it. <laughs> I try the uh, and I love it. Awesome. Yeah, it yeah. sounds delicious. Yeah, but uh, spicy, <laughs> of course. 
<laughs> so would you like to read through the ingredients list for us? Uh, okay. Ahmed, yeah? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, chicken tikka masala yield for serving. Um, one and a half pound bond and skin chicken breast. Mm -hmm. um, two third. Uh, what does this seal uh, mean? Cup. Cup. Okay. Two third cup plain low fat yogurt. Fresh ginger root grated. Two cloves of garlic crushed. One. Is it a tablespoon or teaspoon? Yeah, teaspoon. Teaspoon. teaspoon yes. <laughs> okay. One teaspoon chili powder, one uh, teaspoon ground coriander seeds, salt to taste, two, uh, this is tablespoon, uh, tablespoon mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. this is, uh, okay, two tablespoon lime juice, uh, two tablespoon oil, lime slices for garnish. Excellent. So we already stumbled across some of the measurements. We have pound, which is I believe it's uniquely American. I don't think anyone else uses the pound system for weight. I think everyone else probably uses kilos. But you can correct me if I'm wrong. There might be someone else who uses pounds. And we use cups for measurement. And we also use teaspoons and tablespoons. Um, let's see. Samuel, would you like to tell me about the measurements you use when you cook? Do you use the same uh, ones or different ones? No, here in Brazil, you, you, we use different ones like kilos and uh, and we use teaspoons and tablespoons, but we never use pounds. I never heard about it here in Brazil. Her teaspoons, yeah, yes, we use, and tablespoon also we use. Awesome. But Pound and the other one, I don't remember the C. Cups. We don't, uh, the cups. I never heard about it. Ah, cups. Cups. Oh, yeah. Cups. Yeah. Cups. For sure. Just a <laughs> pound. <laughs> All right. And um, Ahmad, do you know what a pound is converted to kilos? Mm, I'm not sure, but I think when uh, uh, kg equals. To something pounds? Yeah, I think so. I'm pretty sure there's a little more than two pounds per kilo. So two is a good number to remember. You can roughly multiply by two if you're converting kilos to pounds. All right. So now we have the instructions on the other side of the divide. There, Janini, would you like to read those for us? I never hear about this cook, this food, sorry. What is it that you never heard of? Oops, he's gone. Um, <laughs> Nauber, would you like to read that second section on the directions for our chicken tikka masala? Okay, okay, gonna try. Uh, rice and chicken, parched Batch dry with what paper, towers, and cut into how can I say three, three four, by four, three four uh, cubes. Put cube cubes onto short skewer, skewers. Is that? Uh huh. Skewers. Skewers. Place skewers the chicken in, into a shallow, no no metal dish. In a small bowl, mix together yogurt, ginger root, garlic, chili powder, co coriander, salt, lime juice, and oil. Who over skewered chicken and turn to cold, completely in marinade. Cover and refrigerate six hours, 
or overnight to allow chicken to absorb flavors. Thank you. I'm going to have the next paragraph for Rafael. Heat grill. Place cured chicken on grill rack and cook five to seven minutes. Turn in skewers and basting occasionally with any remaining marinade. Serve hot. <laughs> Garnish it with lime slices. Awesome. Thank you. So, first of all, we should talk a little bit about the vocabulary and then we'll talk about if the recipe sounds delicious or not. So, we have some bold words and the bold words are our vocabulary words today. The first one is in the left part where it says yield four servings. What do you think yield means? Anybody? Yield. So if there's if four servings in this recipe, what does that mean? Uh, does anybody know? I don't know. It's maybe. <laughs> it's similar to it produces. The yield is the product or the production. So if it yields four servings, it means that the recipe will make enough for four people to eat. Oh. The yield is how much is made by this I, recipe. I understand. All right. Our next vocabulary word on the left side is all the way at the bottom when it says lime slices for garnish. What does garnish mean? The decoration. Huh? Yeah, to, to make uh, the food look uh, beautiful. Yeah, exactly. So to make a meal look more beautiful or more attractive, you might put something on top of it at the end or right on the side of the dish. Usually it's some ingredient of the meal. So if you're going to put pepper in, you maybe put it on the top so that it's very beautiful. And also, it goes in the food when the person mixes it up. Sometimes we use cheese for garnish or lime or chocolate if it's a dessert. Our next vocabulary word is on the right side and it's skewer. Skewer. Does anybody know this word, the word skewer? I don't know. Skewer is a kind of stick and you use it to cook food. So something like shish kebab or, um, well, kebab in general. So kebab is cooked on like a long stick and that's called a skewer. Sometimes if you cook something over a fire, you'll use a skewer to, um, you put a piece of wood, a long thin stick through the food that you want to cook and then you put that over heat or over the fire. I understand. Okay. Any questions so far? No, it's okay. Okay. Our next vocabulary word on the right is marinade. Does anyone know this word already? It's probably when you put something into water. I don't know. I'm not sure about it. You're very correct in the sense that we're talking about putting the chicken into something liquid, not usually water, but liquid is very important in marinade. So what is the marinade made of in this recipe? Of yogurt, ginger root, garlic, chili powder. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So all of those things are combined to make a spicy liquid. And then we let the chicken marinade, meaning that it absorbs the flavor of that juice. So to marinate is to cover it in this liquid so that it absorbs the flavor. And our last vocabulary word is basting. It says basting occasionally with any remaining marinade. So what does basting mean? Um, maybe uh a little bit. Exactly. Yeah, so um, we take a little bit. If there's extra marinade left over, we continue to put it on the chicken while it's cooking. 
So basting means to, to paint on the chicken. Usually you'll see a paintbrush used or something, and you just cover the chicken in it. All right, any questions about vocabulary or anything else from this recipe? Yes, uh, what is garlic? What is garlic? Yes. Alio. I'll put it in the chat box. Okay. There you go. Ah, I understand. <laughs> I understand. And coriander. Uh huh. Um, that's a kind of spice. I do not know how to say it. I think. No, I don't know how to say that one. I'll I'll translate it, or maybe I can find a picture. But even a picture is uh, difficult. I, I I I find. Hey, if you find it, let me know. Tell me in the chat box. Got to improve my vocabulary too. <laughs> Any other questions on that recipe we have? Yeah, I have. Yeah, yeah. yeah please. Uh, uh, in the first line, uh, rinse chicken, pat dry. The word pat. What does it mean? Pat is like when you softly touch something with the top of your hand, like when you maybe pet a cat or pet a dog, you just gently touch the top. You don't do it very hard, so it's kind of just a gentle touch. Mm, like when I pat the uh, shoulder of someone, for example. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any other questions? All right, so then let's talk about if it sounds good. So this recipe has garlic and chili and uh, coriander, lime, chicken. Does it sound like it would be a delicious recipe? I'm going to start on the right this time with Samuel. Is it a delicious recipe? Uh, maybe, but I don't like chili at all. And <laughs> at the, it's so, how can I say? Mm hot it's <laughs> oh spicy a uh, spicy i can't eat it much chili because when i eat chili i need it lots of water and i will i think i will not like <laughs> because of the chili but the rest of the rice seems delicious mm. without chili it seems delicious okay rafael do you think it would be delicious Well, I'm tired just for reading this recipe. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it might be delicious, but I think it's, I don't know, maybe it's, it's the kind of recipe I, I would, I shouldn't do it. You know, I, I, I think it's not a kind of recipe I would do it, but okay. It's too complicated to be worth at it? Least, at least for me, it's, but I know, I don't know, maybe, maybe it would sound easy, but it does look okay. pretty complicated. An experienced chef would need this recipe, right? Okay, uh, I think <laughs> he's going to do this easily. Mm. And Ahmad, what do you think of this recipe? Does it sound like it would be tasty? Uh, yeah, I think so. Because of some ingredients like uh, um, ginger mm -hmm. and garlic. Yeah, those two. When you put uh, them in the food or recipe, they, uh, they go uh, a very strong uh, taste. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Means, uh, it is uh, a tasty food. Uh, something else I like in this uh, recipe, it is grilled. That means I don't use a lot of oil. I mean, I don't fry it, for example. Yeah, good point. It's a little healthier. Yeah, it is. All right. Well, our next yeah. recipe is called moussaka, and we're going to decide if this one looks delicious. Rafael, would you read the ingredients list for us? Moussaka. Yield six servings. One pound ground beef. One cup chopped onion. Olive oil. One cup of water. Half cup of tomato paste. Uh, what is CB? I don't know. Uh, tablespoon. 
Ta okay, table, okay. Two tables minced parsley, stick butter, salt and pepper, medium eggplants, a half cup bread crumbs, eggs well beaten, and a half cup grated cheese. Excellent. And the right side, Samuel, would you read? Yes. Brown the meat and the onion in some olive oil when well browned. Added water, tomato paste, parsley, butter, salt and pepper and let it simmer or simmer, I don't know, on all for one hour or more until sauce is thickened. In the meantime, peel and cut the eggplants lengthwise in one four thick slice. Salted in olive oil to a golden brown. 80 two tablespoons bread crumbs to the meat sauce and mix well. Burn a baking dish well and sprinkle with some bread crumbs. Place half of eggplant slice in the dish and spread half of the meat sauce on top. Repeat. Pour eggs on top and spread. Okay. And then evening even. Sprinkle it with cheese and bread crumbs and bake at 350 for half hour or until golden. Serve with cheese sauce if you want. Awesome. So, questions on vocabulary? Let me see. We have a few words that are pointed out in bold. The first one is simmer. What does simmer mean? Simmer means um, cooking on uh, a very low heat. Yeah, a very low heat. So it's when it's cooking, but it's not at a boil. Boil is a very high temperature, and simmer is a slightly lower temperature. And our next word is sauté. Sauté in olive oil to a golden brown. What does sauté mean? When you get the ingredient and pass it through the oil. Yeah, so you cook them in oil. It's like frying, but with very little oil. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And our last word in bold is sprinkle. We sprinkle with cheese and breadcrumbs on the top of it. What's sprinkle when mean? You hmm? Get some cheese, just a few of cheese or some, I don't know, mm -hmm. one, what you want, and put it on the things that you are doing, just like put a few or more, I don't know, it's when you get cheese and put it on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you take a little bit and you just crumble it on top. You take tiny yeah. pieces and you spread it evenly on the top. There's something that's very famously seen on ice cream and it's called sprinkles. And they're just like these little colored bits of sugar that you put on the top of cake or ice cream or any sweet. And they're very colorful. And they're called that because you sprinkle them on. You just take these tiny little pieces and you disperse them on the top of something. All right. Any other questions uh, about the vocabulary of this recipe? Yes, please. I have a question. Uh, can you see uh, the word um, eggplant lengthwise? Uh huh. Yeah, the word lengthwise. Uh, link or lengthwise, I don't know. So, lengthwise means that you're going to cut it the longest way. So, an eggplant is kind of, it's got one side that's tall or longer, and the other side that's kind of round and short, you know, it's like an oval, basically. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, if, it, if it yeah. says cut it lengthwise, it means cut it to make the slices the long way, not the short way. Yeah. 
Yeah, like like ribbons. Not not ribbons really, but yeah, it is long. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Another word in the in the same uh, lines. Uh, uh, eggplants. Uh, it flies in. Uh, is it quarter? When uh, out of four. What? I'm sorry. What was the question? Okay. Okay. The rest of that line. Eggplants. Then flies in the number itself. Oh, one fourth of an inch. When you see those tiny little marks, they're like quotation marks. If it yeah. comes at the end of a number, it always means inches. So okay. we're saying one fourth of an inch. Uh -huh. Do you use inch? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, inch is yeah. a different measurement. And does anybody know the conversion of? Inches to centimeters? No, I don't know. I believe. Oh. Go for it. What is it? To fifty-four. I think. Fifty-four what? Uh, uh, two. Okay. Uh, I can say in millimeter. Uh, two hundred fifty-four. So two hundred fifty-four millimeters to every inch, yeah. and in other words, that would be two centimeters and a half every inch. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Any other questions on this, the vocabulary, or anything else in this recipe? No, it's okay. All right. So, um, Samuel, does it sound like a good recipe? Yeah, it does. <laughs> Better than the last one? Yeah, I think so. All right. Rafael, is it a good recipe? Mm, yes, I think so. Do you like it better than the last recipe? Mm. Mm. Yeah, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Ahmad, do you think it's a good recipe? Uh, I'm not sure because of uh, this eggplant. <laughs> uh, some people don't like maybe the uh, eggplant. Mm. Yeah, but uh, for me, I might uh, maybe uh, find an al alternative instead of eggplants. I might put something else. I see. Um, so yeah. which recipe do you like better? Uh, as for me, I like the first one because it is easier. I think I need, I need just to uh, make uh, the marinade and, mm -hmm. uh, and just mix uh, with uh, chicken, then put them in skewer and grill. <laughs> Here I need first to cook the meat and the things. After that, I need to cut the uh, eggplant and put uh, as layers. Then uh, wait for uh, more half an hour in the oven. Uh, take time, I think. <laughs> All right, we have one more recipe to go, and this one is actually a dessert. So I, definitely, it's going to be my favorite because I love dessert. It's called triple chocolate fudge brownies. And let's see. Samuel, would you read the ingredients list? Sure. Triple chocolate for the brownies. Yield one serving. Three. What is us? Us? What is it? Ounce. Three ounce fine quality bitter sweet chocolate, not unsweetened chocolate. One ounce. Unsweetened chocolate, chocolate. Three or four stick on salted butter cut into pieces. Three or four cups of sugar. One teaspoon of vanilla. Two. What is that? Two large eggs. Okay. Two large eggs and half half teaspoon of salt. Half cup all purpose flour, half cup some sweet chocolate chips. Excellent, thank you. And the directions, Ahmad, would you read for us? Okay. Uh, Preheat oven to 350 degrees and butter and flour on an 8 by 8 inches baking pan. In a heavy one and a half 
apa jadi squad ya squad ya oke squad six liter thousand milk butter sweet and and sweetened chocolate and butter over low heat stirring until smooth then remove pan from heat cool mixture to uh, well and whisk in sugar and vanilla add egg one at a time whisking well until mixture is glossy and smooth stir in salt and flour and chocolate chips spread butter evenly in pan and bake in middle of oven 25 to 30 minutes or until a toothpick comes out with crumbs adhering to it. Cool brownies completely in pan on a on rack before cutting into 16 squares. Excellent. Thank you. So we have a few vocabulary words to go over in bold. The first one is lukewarm. So cool mixture to lukewarm. What does lukewarm mean? Lukewarm, I think it's when something is not hot and not cold. It's lukewarm. Exactly. So kind of like something that's not really extreme, just kind of a generally warm temperature. And whisk, or whisking in sugar and vanilla, what does whisk mean? Kind of mixing. Yeah, it is like mixing. It's yeah. like very quick mixing when you have to mix something in and you want it to get distributed in every part of your mixture. You mix very quickly. Our next vocabulary word is glossy from the sentence whisking well until mixture is glossy and smooth. What does glossy mean? I just know. <laughs> Nobody knows this word? No. All right. So glossy is when something's shiny and smooth and it usually talks about the top of something. So something that's glossy could be a brand new car. It has kind of a shiny smooth top to it because it's brand new. Um. And when we mix in all the ingredients the top of our mixture will be shiny and smooth. Okay. Um, can anyone else name something that's glossy aside from a car and baking? I'm not sure. What? I'm not sure. I don't know. <laughs> I Maybe when, uh, okay, when you um, can like. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> when you fry an egg, for example. Okay, when you fry an egg. So you're saying that when after you've fried an egg, it's glossy on top? Maybe the yolk. <laughs> the yolk. Glossy? Sure, yeah. yeah. The yolk, once it comes out, could be glossy. Or even an egg before it's cooked sometimes is glossy. What else? Yeah. Can I say, like... When someone's, you, I don't know, uh, hair is glass or no? <laughs> yes, you can. Someone's hair could be glossy, so if it's shiny and very soft and smooth, you could say they have glossy hair. Oh, uh, yeah. Thank you. Maybe a uh, type of uh, woman dress, maybe? Sure. Sometimes if it's made of some kind of fancy material and it's shiny and smooth, that could be glossy, too. All right. Our next vocabulary word is batter, when it says spread batter evenly in the pan. What is a batter? I think, I think here it means the, the mixture. 
Yeah, the mixture. So when you're baking, specifically when you're baking, you get this kind of liquidy mixture before you put it in the oven, and that's called batter. And our last vocabulary word is adhering. So it says, bake in the middle of the oven 25 to 30 minutes or until the toothpick comes out with, comes out with crumbs adhering to it. So the toothpick has crumbs adhering to it. What does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> Appearing, I don't know. Adhering. It's kind of the same as sticking. So if you pull the toothpick out and there are crumbs sticking to the toothpick, it's a synonym for adhere. Adhere is like when something is attached or sticking to something else. Oh, okay. Okay. Do we have any other questions on the vocabulary in this recipe? Mm, yes, please. Yeah. Uh, the ons here, uh, in the first uh, line, uh, in the ingredients, three or the ons. Uh, um, so, do you see yeah. in the chat box where I put OZ equals ounce, and ounce is a measurement similar to grams. It's what we use in the U.S. instead of grams. Uh -huh, yeah. It equals how many... You know, I'm not really sure how grams and ounces are converted, but I'll look it up right now. Okay, another question, please. And uh, in the same line, three on fine quality, better sweet chocolate. Mm -hmm. uh, what is better sweet here? In chocolate, we have a lot of different flavors. So sometimes you'll see white chocolate, which is very sweet, not bitter at all. And then other times you'll see dark chocolate, which is a little more bitter, and it's not quite as sweet. But we also have something called bittersweet chocolate, which is somewhere in the middle. It's a little bit darker than milk chocolate, but it's lighter than dark chocolate. Yes. Okay. So it's somewhere in the middle of the sweetness. It's not super sweet, and it's not super bitter either. Uh -huh. yeah. Thank you. Any other questions on vocabulary or anything else from this recipe? No? Okay, so I looked it up, and it says that there is point zero four ounces in a gram. Let me find out how many grams there are in an ounce. Um, so one ounce equals 28 grams. Hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. Now I want to know which is your favorite of these recipes, Ahmad. Of the three recipes we read, which sounds the most delicious? Uh, actually, I don't know because I can't see them <laughs> in the front of me now. But uh, maybe the first one uh, is uh, delicious. I think. The very first one. All right. Yeah, the very first. Rafael, which of these recipes is most good looking? I think it's the first one. Okay, so you agree then with Ahmad. Yes. Samuel, which recipe do you think is the most delicious? Sure, the last one. <laughs> awesome, <laughs> I totally agree with you. The last one is definitely the best. I disagree. <laughs> Why do you disagree, Rafael? All this work for one serving. I don't think so. It's <laughs> so much work for this. <laughs> you can eat the dessert, that's why. It takes time. <laughs> yeah, it might be more difficult, but it is the most delicious for sure. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you go, uh, what do you call it in English? Uh, sweet uh, tea? <laughs> mm -hmm. Ahmad, that's which do you think is the most difficult recipe there? Uh, 
I think I'm not sure uh, because I'm not uh, I'm not good at uh, desserts. I think uh, the last one <laughs> maybe is not easy for me. Mm, mm-hmm. But, uh, it, it needs your skin, uh, these type of things, you know. Uh, the problem with the egg when you whisk it, uh, we, when you don't whisk it well, uh, it might go, might go, the butter goes down maybe. Mm-hmm. It's to, 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 go, to go up or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Samuel. Which do you think is the most difficult recipe? Let me see. I'm not sure about it, but I think that even if it's delicious, the last one is so hard. <laughs> 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 Lots of things to do just for one serving. <laughs> Very true. Very yeah, true. but it deserves. It deserves. I mean, it is dessert. And, uh, exactly. And, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It deserves yeah. that much. Yeah, and, uh, it's delicious not just to uh, to eat maybe, even just to watch, to look at it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Beautiful. And my last question is, which is the most expensive, do you think? Rafael, which of these recipes do you think is the most expensive? Rafael? Yes, I think it's... Uh, I think it's the... F- I think it's the first one, maybe. The most expensive? E- yes. Okay. Yes, yes. Uh, Samuel. Now, why do you think it's the most expensive, Rafael? Well, because of the, I don't know, maybe the yogurt or the chicken breast. I don't know, maybe. Um, mm-hmm. Those can be pricey sometimes. Uh, I don't know how much is the beef there in the U.S., but I, I think it's very, very expensive here. Yeah, it can uh, be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's the first one. No opinion. Okay. Samuel, do you agree with him that the first one is the most expensive? Yeah, yeah, I agree. Because cause of the chicken breasts, it's not cheap. And the other ingredients are hard to find. Mm-hmm. Here, where I live, like, it's not easy to find ginger root and chili powder. <laughs> it's not easy because I live in a small, small town. And uh, I think the first one's more expensive. Okay. Um, Ahmad, do you agree with them? Is the first one the most expensive recipe? Mm, in my opinion, uh, mm, all of them are expensive, I think. Uh, the first one go chicken breast. The second one go uh, ground beef. The third one go chocolate. Chocolate uh, is not uh, cheap, by the way. True. Yeah, that's what uh, I mean. So I think all are <laughs> expensive. I don't know. Uh, maybe they might be cheap. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It depends how much. Because uh, I don't know really in ounces here and grams. Uh, I, I know in cups. <laughs> Seriously. Mm-hmm. In ounces, I don't know. <laughs> Pretty All right. How about you? What do you think? Well, I think I think the most fun one to make would be the chocolate one, but I think if you were going to make it for many people, it would be very expensive. But if you're just going to make it for yourself, then it wouldn't be very expensive. So then I think maybe the one with beef would be the most expensive. Uh-huh. Yeah. Fair. All right. Any other questions or comments on the recipes we saw today? Um, okay. Next time, if uh, it is possible, you can uh, make class uh, again. Uh, but uh, you can mix, for example, uh, how to make uh, fresh juice, how to make um, I don't know, uh, kind of appetizer, for example. Okay, so uh, maybe uh, more diverse recipes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sounds good. I'll definitely try that. 
-hmm. And uh, everyone maybe can uh, teach <laughs> the rest in the class how to make uh, certain or such uh, recipe or that would be really example. fun, definitely. We could trade uh, recipes and different cultures. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I, need, I need your recipe, for example, not a different one. Good idea, Ahmad. Thank you. All right. Well, does anyone else have anything else to say before we leave class today? I'm going to, for anyone who does not yet have it, I'm going to leave you my Facebook name just in case you have any questions or comments while I'm not around on Verbling. And if you'd like to request classes, you can always message me there and ask me for a particular class. Or if you have any questions, just let me know. Thanks, guys. I'll see you another time. Okay. Thank you, Michael. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.